I'm going to cut off my past. I won't let you do that! I learned everything from people of the past! It's because I had my friends that I was able to keep moving forward! They're what created the me that's here now! I'm never gonna let you cut that away! <laughs> then... You must know what you need to do. <laughs> A calamity has befallen the River of Time. An incident affecting the course of human history. That is to say, the erasure of history. A ninja world with no history is no ninja world. A ninja world with no history is devoid of humanity. The Book of Transcendence, which you composed long ago, now lies forgotten and unknown. History must be resurrected. Yet to accomplish this, we require a foundation whereupon its path will be retraced. Therefore, we shall weave this foundation together. We must once again set to paper the verses of this long-forgotten book. Let us begin. From here forth, history will be spun again, and so we must grant him a central role. The circumstances of his birth were cruel. Within the Land of Fire, the being known as the Nine-Tailed Fox Spirit descended upon the Hidden Leaf Village and began a violent rampage. The fourth Hokage, leader of the village, sealed the wild spirit away into the body of Naruto Uzumaki, returning peace to the village for a time.
With the spirit of the nine-tailed fox sealed within him as an infant, Naruto endured persecution from the villagers, and yet he thrived. Time passed, and Naruto grew into a young man with dreams of becoming Hokage himself one day. With his indomitable optimism, he soon found himself surrounded by close friends. Among them was a young man named Sasuke Uchiha of the Uchiha clan, and Sakura Haruno, a young lady who admired Sasuke. It was these two shinobi who were assigned to Team 7 alongside Naruto after their graduation from the Ninja Academy. Undertaking countless missions together, they became especially close. But before they could embark on such missions, their team captain, Kakashi Hatake, had them carry out an exercise in order to test their abilities. This will be nothing like your previous training. It's a test to see what you can actually accomplish as a Genin. Well, the time has come. Let the survival session begin. Of the 27 graduates, only 9 will be accepted as Genin, and the chance that you'll fail is at least 66%. That can't be! What was the graduation test for anyway? Oh, that? Just to select potential Genin candidates. What? 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 Oh, oh, dang. Well, I'm not gonna be weeded out! Not finished yet! I'm not that easy to beat! I can do it when it counts! For what it's worth, that was pretty good. Huh. You're better than I thought. So this is it. All right, you passed. Huh? But we couldn't get the bells. I wasn't testing your individual skills. It was your teamwork I was looking at. Teamwork? In the ninja world, rules are important. It's true. But... There's nothing worse than ninja who won't help their friends. And I think you three get that. Of course, I'll still need to train you a heck of a lot more. All right, the exercise is over. Team 7 starts its first mission tomorrow. Competing against Kakashi, these three young shinobi learned the potential power in teamwork. And so, Team 7 was officially formed. Despite holding different dreams and ambitions within their hearts, the three friends set off together on the true path of the ninja. And so began their journey on a path with no end.
Now official members of Team 7, the three of them undertook a mission to escort a dignitary to the Land of Waves. A bridge was under construction to connect the impoverished Land of Waves to the other nations. However, the work was frequently impeded by a group who did not look with favor upon the project. Team 7 made the decision to guard the bridge through its completion. It was then that two strange characters emerged and drew them into a fierce battle. This duo consisted of Zabuza Momochi, one of the seven ninja swordsmen, and Haku, a young disciple of Zabuza, who possessed considerable powers himself. Although Naruto felt a sense of ambivalence toward Haku, who he could see was being used as a mere tool by Zabuza, for the sake of his friends and his beliefs, he steeled his resolve and challenged Haku alongside Sasuke. Now that I'm here, everybody's gonna be fine! <laughs> Don't hold us back, Sasuke! That's what you're here for, loser. All right, here I go! Uh, no, no, uh. I fight for someone who is precious to me. I live for him and face death for him. So his dream may become reality. I'll defeat anyone who interferes with Sabuza, no matter who it is. And I won't let those important to me get hurt! I'm gonna win this no matter what! Music. Consciousness. In the midst of heated combat, Sasuke awakens Sharingan, a special visual jutsu only accessible to the Uchiha clan, turning the battle in their favor. Why? Why did you save me? I didn't ask you to! I don't know. My body just moved. There was no time to think, loser. Witnessing this tragedy, Naruto flew into a violent rage, awakening the power of the nine-tailed fox sealed within him and unleashing an attack that overcame Haku. What's happening? I'll never forgive you! I'm no match for this kid. Sabuza. While Naruto and Sasuke were occupied with Haku, Kakashi was also locked in mortal combat with Zabuza. A faker like you could never beat me. For the land of waves and its future, I'll put an end to you. Your future holds only one thing, death. You can't defeat me. I fight because of my ambitions. 
You're too dangerous. I'll have to stop you here. Lightning blade! Zabuza, you got a little too ambitious. Why? Why can't I keep up? You can't beat me in your current state. Farewell, demon. Here I come! There you are! Here I come! As Kakashi lashed out with the finishing blow, Haku threw his body in between them, sacrificing his life to protect his master. When a person has something precious they want to protect, then they become genuinely strong. Haku walked his own ninja way until the very end. Just then, Gato, Zabuza's employer, arrived on the scene with a large band of outlaws. Having no further use for his two underlings, his plan was to murder them along with all of Team Seven. As a gesture of gratitude for the empathy that Naruto had displayed toward Haku, Zabuza expended the last of his remaining strength to slay Gato. Haku. You were always at my side. The least I can do is be beside you at the end. I know it cannot be, but I wish I could go where you have gone. As snow fell all around them like tears from heaven, Zabuza drew his final breath beside Haku's broken body. Watching these two shinobi live out their ninja way to the very end made a powerful impression on Naruto.
The Chunin Exam, an event jointly coordinated by the Hidden Leaf, Hidden Sand, and other neighboring nations to bring their Genin together to be tested. However, in truth, its primary purpose was to allow each nation to demonstrate its military strength in a small-scale mock war. The three friends, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, successfully applied the teamwork they had developed during their previous missions to pass the first and second tests. For their third test, they were matched individually against other ninja for the right to advance. Naruto was pitted against his ninja academy classmate, Kiba Inosuka. I'll never lose to the likes of you! Easier said than done. Let's see what you could do! If you're my opponent, I've already won! Ah! One day I'll be Hokage, so losing here is not an option! <laughs> you, Hokage, keep dreaming! Never underestimate me! Yeah. Better than I thought! I'll knock you out not right away! Yet. I'm not that easy to beat! Don't get too cocky! One day I'll be Hokage, so losing here's not an option! As the spectators watched the stunning upset unfold, they began to realize the extent of Naruto's ability. And so did Naruto. As the tuning exam preliminary matches came to a close, it was time for the finals to begin. Naruto was matched against Neji Hyuga, considered the mightiest genin of the Hidden Leaf. Neji had completely dominated Hinata Hyuga in the preliminaries. But after being ridiculed with the phrase, once a loser, always a loser, Naruto vowed to avenge the insult leveled against him and Hinata. I'm gonna win! Now you'll learn the hard way that no one can alter fate. You can't defeat me. It's not your destiny. Not losing to some coward who goes on about destiny or whatever! I look forward to your look of despair when you realize the truth. You're too shabby. Not losing to you of all people! Not a chance! <laughs> Unbelievable! How could I? Don't give me that crap about nobody changing fate! What a bunch of garbage! Cause unlike me, you're no failure. It was Neji who once said, One can't change destiny, in reference to the fate of the Hyuga clan's branch house. 
But drawing inspiration from his fight with Naruto, he began to believe that he could, in fact, alter his destiny. The sudden conflict was an unprecedented disturbance for the Hidden Leaf. Hiruzin Sarutobi, the third Hokage, faced off against Orochimaru amidst the raging maelstrom. As one of the legendary Sanin, Orochimaru had once been his student. Orochimaru's goal in inciting the conflagration was to bring about the destruction of the Hidden Leaf by his own hand. He also hoped to abduct Sasuke in order to use his superior body as a reincarnation vessel. To defeat Hiruzen, Orochimaru employed the forbidden reanimation jutsu to summon the first Hokage, Hashirama Senju, and the second Hokage, Tobirama Senju. His aim was to instigate a fierce battle between Hokages. Interesting fact. There's an odd sense of joy in wounding the one you once called Master. Hmm. You're feeling that now, are you? In a moment, I'll let you taste some of that same sweet thrill yourself. I will no! not escape. Orochimaru is reanimating them? This is terrible! Disrespecting the dead and manipulating time. Don't let them kill you too quickly. Go, no, that would be. Firestar rushing the leaf. But I didn't know the sand were on the move. Also part of your plan? History is always progressing. Sarutopi Sensei. Anything you try is too late. I've won. 
and the leaf village will fall. Nothing's over until the end. No! Your dream of crushing the hidden leaf dies here. You feeble old man! Give me back my arms! How dare you take my jutsu from me! Farewell, Orochimaru, my disciple. And so the plan to destroy the Hidden Leaf failed. All ninja of the Leaf had put their lives on the line in the fight to protect the village and thwart Orochimaru's foul scheme. Where the tree leaves dance, one shall find flames. The fire shadow will illuminate the village, and once again, tree leaves shall bud anew. In his desperate battle with Sasuke during the tuning exams, Gara had flown into a nearly uncontrollable rage. In order to protect their ultimate weapon from himself in his disturbed state, Sand Ninja intervened to escape with Gara. Sasuke pursued them fervently, finally overtaking them in the Hidden Leaf Forest. I am not letting you get away! I'll give you a taste of true fear. No I'll take on anyone to test my strength. <laughs> Make me feel alive. What's wrong? Have my fill yet? Go on, entertain me more. I know you can do this. You're pushing your luck. No escape. <laughs> Using Chidori, a devastating ninjutsu taught to him by Kakashi, Sasuke confronted Gara. However, Orochimaru had placed a terrible curse mark upon Sasuke. He suddenly found himself unable to move. Hold it right there! Naruto, what are you doing here? Just as Gara's sand attack was about to strike, Naruto rushed in just in time to save his friend.
In the same way as Naruto, Gara hosted within his body a one-tailed spirit known as Shukaku. The only bonds that Gara shared with others were shackles of hatred and murderous rage, and in his eyes, combat was only to be undertaken with the intent to kill or be killed. As Naruto fought for the sake of his friend, Gara fought for himself only. Thus began a confrontation between two shinobi who had endured similar challenges, yet reached opposite conclusions. I'm gonna crush you! And all your little friends, too! My friends... are everything! I'll protect them to the end! Fly high! Wind style air voice! 
It's almost unbearable, isn't it? The feeling of being alone. But I have people in my life now, who are important to me. I care more about them than I do myself, and I won't let anyone hurt them. To his final ounce of strength, Naruto caught Gara flush on the cheek with a full force blow. But it was not hatred that was behind the attack. It was the sympathy that only one who had shared similar experiences could express. I know that feeling. I've been there, in that dark and lonely place. Why... Why do this for anyone but yourself? Because they saved me from myself. From my loneliness. They were the first to accept me for who I am. They're my friends. Friends... I see. So that's where his strength comes from. Knowing well the suffering of solitude, Naruto was able to empathize with Gara's feelings to a painful degree. And yet, Naruto now had important people in his life who accepted him, so he could not overlook Gara's aggression. Witnessing the power of love firsthand, Gara cast aside his bloodlust and departed with the aid of the other sand ninja. He left hoping that he too could emulate Naruto one day. Thank <laughs> you. 